there are growing calls for an overhaul of the operations of the ambulance service following revelations from the public probe of circumstances leading to the death of a pregnant woman in January. The 30-year-old mother, Augustina Wache, lost her life allegedly due to delays on the part of the ambulance crew transporting her to a crown. Whilst answering questions before the Parliamentary Ad Hoc Committee investigating the issue, CEO of the Ambulance Service, Professor Ahmed Nuhu Zakaria, admitted his officers demanded 600 CDs from husband of the deceased. But he challenges claims the delay resulted in the death of the pregnant woman. This was a lady who from day one was in some form of shock. Obviously, it will have started with neurogenic shock. And whatever the case, it could have moved into cardiogenic shock. And when they got to Commander Junction and they realized that the patient's condition was deteriorating, they had to branch to Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. There, obviously, the challenge they had was because they hadn't called before coming, definitely the hospital was not ready to accept the patient. So they had to spend some time trying to negotiate acceptance of this particular case. Eventually, in the course, the woman's um, condition got worse, she deteriorated and went into cardiorespiratory arrest. And some resuscitation was done, but obviously unsuccessful. And the woman eventually passed on. So from the narration we had, from the investigations were part of this way, the chronology of events that led to the death of the patient. Now, this development has outraged many members of the public who are calling for an overhaul of the ambulance system. Some of them called into the Super Morning Show and shared harrowing experiences with the service. I remember one time there was an accident and they called the ambulance service. When they came, they came, the person was in blood, lying. And then what they tell us is we should pay before. Koyo, I got hold of myself. I will have thrown blue. When we called you, you had the petrol to come. But I don't have the petrol to pick the person to the hospital. Hmm. That was very terrible. In fact, so what happened? What did you do? Yeah, we got motorbike. This same wow. motorbike, they say it is no good. We got a motorbike and then we pick the person to the hospital. Back on campus, University of Ghana. I mean, deep in the night, I was feeling unwell. So what I did was that I called the ambulance service. And then what they told me was that, hey, I better pick a taxi and find myself into a hospital. Oh, really? That's what the ambulance service <laughs> told you? Yes. And look, because it was just about 1 a.m. So what I did eventually was that I had to struggle and then get out of the hall. And thankfully, uh, some of the boys had gone to the nightclub. They went partying and they had returned me in an Uber. And then that saved me. Five so that, that's, how, that's how terrible the situation is. You know? I'm a health worker. Mm. And where I work from, before we refer a case from our facility to maybe a teaching hospital, if we charge 100 CD from the ambulance services. And the most sad thing about it is that it's not only the ambulance services that delay the services. Even the referring center, maybe Kolebu will tell you there's no bed. Mm. And, the, and then you get there and there's bed. They will delay you. Sometimes you'll be referring cases and you spend more than three hours. And these things have to be dealt with because it is unbecoming. Okay. Yes, I have a personal experience last year, August. Uh, for lack of oxygen in the ambulance, I lost my mom. Oh. I lost my mom. On the 12th of June, my brother had an accident, and then the case was very bad. So when we rushed into the Diamond Road Teaching Hospital, they told us to uh, buy fuel so that they could move him from the hospital there to the teaching hospital. So I had to contact my uncle, Mr. Gerard, before we could raise that money because at that instance, we didn't have that money on us. But unfortunately, when they took him there, he passed away. So those are the experiences of some people who called into the Super Morning Show. Let's go into the phone lines now and speak to Kovna Minta Kando. He's the ranking member on the Health Committee of Parliament. Thank you very much for your time here on Join News Prime. First of all, I understand the public probe has ended. Uh, what is your assessment of, of that session? Okay, so let me say good evening to your listeners. And to start with, I indicated to your producer who called me that I had constraints discussing and assessing the report so far because 
I'm the vice chair of that particular committee, and we have not submitted our report to the House. It, it has not been debated, and so it will not be proper for me to start debating the report of the committee in public before it is filed on the floor of the House. But what I can tell you is that, yes, um, the husband of the, of, of, of the disease um, appeared before us. The CHAG, Christian Health Association of Ghana, also appeared before us because the facility in question, which is the um, Holy Child um, Hospital in Kijai, is a faci that facility is for CHAG. So if can kindly here. speak up for us, uh, we seem to be losing you along can the Can you line. hear me? Yes, this is much better. Thank you. Okay, so what I said was that um, in all these institutions and individuals who were concerned as far as these issues are concerned, um, have appeared before the committee and I was trying to list them. And I said, the husband of the disease has appeared before the committee and then the CHAC, which is the Christian Health Association of Ghana, they've also appeared. The facility in question, which is the, uh, I mean, um, Holy Child Hospital, have also appeared. Ghana Health Service have appeared before the committee. The ministry, they've also appeared before the committee. And so we are almost done. We are more than 90% true. But the conversation will be enriched and it will be very interesting if we had, I mean, filed our report, debated, and then we started a discussion on it. But I okay. can tell you that... The ultimate aim is to bring the report and recommendations and findings that will help us as a country to prevent the reoccurrence of such a situation. So, so when can we expect that report to be laid before Parliament? Well, we, I am very sure that by the end of next week, we'll be able to lay our report, but we are not the people to determine whether or not the report will be taken on the first day or second day, it will be determined by the business committee of the House. But I'm sure that we will finish our report by next week. Well, we'll leave it here. Thank you very much. That's our government, Kando. He is the ranking member on the Health Committee of Parliament. <laughs>